Okay, so here on the left side of the screen, I have LogicWorks open with the serial, serial adder ready to go. On the right side, I have the table that I'm going to use to track and try to understand the operation of this circuit. And the specific addition we want to do is shown down here, uh, A plus B, with A being 1, 0, 1, 1, 11 in decimal, plus 0, 1, 1, 0, 6 in decimal, and that should give me a result of 17 in decimal. So the four main steps are shown over here on the left. First, I want to clear all the registers. Then I'm going to load in the augend or the A value. Up next, I will transfer that A value while I'm simultaneously loading in the B value. After all that work, I finally get A and B where I need them to be, and then I can add them together over the next four clock pulses. Okay. So let's zoom in on this table so we can really focus on uh, these numbers that we're going to fill in. So first step is to clear the registers. Over here in the circuit, I see that currently there are some uh, apparently random values still left over in the registers. These are from previous operations. So I flip the clear, and immediately all of the registers drop to zero. I unclick the clear uh, so that I can actually do work. So when I clear the registers, I get a bunch of zeros, uh, all throughout my circuit. So I record that result in the table. Up next is to load in the A value. And I need to do this going least significant to most significant, or rightmost bit to leftmost bit. And this is under A, but I actually first load it in to register B. And the way to do that is I flip the serial bit in uh, to the rightmost value of A. I need to flip this on-off switch to on. If I leave it off, no matter how many times I flip this clock, nothing is changing because no clock pulse is making it through that AND gate. But now, if I flip this switch to on, one clock pulse later, what happens? That serial in value 1 gets clocked in to the first bit within register B. I do another clock pulse. That new one gets clocked in, and the previous one gets shifted down by 1. The next value I need for A is actually a 0. So let's flip serial in to a zero, and we clock that in. Now there's a zero that got pushed in, and those two ones both got shifted down by one. And then lastly, I need another one. Let's clock that in. And we can see here, my A value, 1011, is perfectly replicated within register B. So up here in my table, one, zero, one, one. And what's going on with the other registers? Well, register A, nothing's happened to it yet. So I get four zeros filled in there. And the D flip-flop, I read its value from this Q output, and it's currently holding on to a zero. Okay, so the next steps are to transfer the aug end while we load in the add end. So how do we load in the add end? I first pass in the least significant bit in B. So that's my serial in, and I flip that low. And then let's look at what this full adder is doing. What is feeding in? The least significant bit of A, the least significant bit in register B, and also the carry in, which comes from the previous carry out, or in other words, whatever value stored in this D flip-flop. So I can see that in the circuit. And this is where I can read those values from the table. Carry in comes from that flip-flop output. B value comes from the least significant bit in B. A value comes from the least significant bit in A. 
and then this full adder we add those three up and we get it's equal to zero one where are these values going to feed well let's look back at the circuit the sum feeds over and gets shifted in to the leftmost bit in a the carry out from the full adder gets passed down to this d flip-flop so up here on the table where does this d flip-flop value come from the carry out which was a zero where does the sum value go this one it gets passed in as the leftmost bit in a and then all the other bits in a which happen to all be zeros get shifted to the right by one and then what is b doing well we have some value that's shifted in on the left and then everything that's currently within the register gets shifted to the right by one bit now what about this rightmost one it doesn't just drop off the face of the earth it was what we used to do the full adder operation to tell the circuit what the D flip-flop in register A should be. So this one, it's not in register B anymore, but its information got sent on to the rest of the circuit. Okay, this X, where does this X come from? That's actually the current serial in, which I have set at a zero. So that's what I expect. Now let's flip the clock and make sure that is the case. D flip-flop reads 0, 0, register A reads 1, 0, 0, 0, and register B reads 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, now that we see how the table interacts with the circuit, let's fill out this table just by reading the values from the previous row. So, C in value comes from the D flip-flop. B value, least significant bit in B. A value, least significant bit in A, and then that's the sum that we get. Where do these outputs feed? Carry out, comes over to the D flip-flop. The sum, the one, becomes the first bit in A, and then everything else gets shifted down by one bit. And then register B, we're passing in some new value, and the currently held values are shifted to the right by one. Now what is this value that we're passing in? Uh, it should be a one in this case because that's the second bit in B. So that's the result I expect. Let's make sure that serial in is a one. I flip the clock and then sure enough all the register values in the circuit and the table match up. Okay, let's look at these next rows, and we're going to follow the same pattern here. C in comes from the D flip-flop. B value comes from least significant bit in register B. A value, least significant bit in A. And the results are 0, 0. C out fills into the D flip-flop. Register A, the most significant bit, comes from the sum. And then everything else gets shifted to the right by one bit. Register B, we shift everything in here to the right by one bit. And then what goes into this uh, X slot? Well, it's going to be the third bit in B now, which is a 1. I flip the clock, and then sure enough, my registers in the circuit and the table match up. Okay, we've got one more row on this step. C in plus least significant bit in B plus least significant in A gives me that sum. Carry out is a zero. My A value, we're shifting in that one and everything else shifts to the right by a bit. And then my B value, I need to pass in a leading zero and then everything else shifted to the right by one. So let's do that in the circuit. Serial in is a zero. Flip that clock. And then now my A value, my B value, match what I have in the table. 
and they also match what I need to do the addition. So all that work just to get A and B loaded in. Now we can actually do some real addition. So let's see what it looks like in this row. Nothing changes with the circuit operation. Uh, it's just what phase I happen to be uh, in these clock pulses. So carry in comes from that D flip-flop. B value, least significant in B is a 0. Least significant in A is a 1. And it adds up to this. Carry out becomes a 0. Register A, we are now shifting in the sum, which is a 1. Shift everything to the right by 1. Register B, I know I'm going to be passing in some value. And then everything else is shifted to the right by 1. At this point, I actually don't care about what this x is going to be equal to. I'll just leave it as a 0, which means I switch this serial into a 0. But it could be a 1, it could be a 0. It has to be some value. I just really don't care about it. Uh, that information won't be used in my addition. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's run the clock so everything gets shifted down by 1. And then let's do this all again. 0 plus 1 plus 1 this time gives me a 1, 0. Carry out is a 1. That goes into that slot. Some bit is a 0. So I get a leading 0 in register A. And then register B. Now I don't care about the first two bits, and the remaining bits I'll shift to the right by one. Okay, let's clock that in. I do the next row of addition. In this case, one plus one plus zero. Carry out goes there. I'm passing in a 0 to A. And then everything in B gets shifted down by 1. Okay, we clock this in. We check our work. Everything seems to be working nicely. And then one final row. 1 plus 0 plus 1. I don't care about any of these bits in B now. I shift in that 0 to A, and then everything is shifted to the right by 1. And one final click of that clock pulse. And there we go. And we are done with our addition. Well, almost. We have to know how to interpret the results. The D flip-flop contains my most significant bit of the 5-bit answer. And register A contains the four remaining bits. And we see, sure enough, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 gives me that value of decimal 17 that I expected. How can I read in the circuit? My carryout is here. It's a 1. And then I've got 0, 0, 0, 1 stored in register A. And uh, it's a lot of work to add four bits together, right? But really, once we get the circuit set up well, I can do this all very quickly if I'm not thinking about each step, right? If I'm able to trust that it is working. So what do I have to do first? Clear everything, okay? Let's set the, uh, the on-off switch to on once I'm ready to go. Now I load in the augend. So I just click in all the A values from right to left. 1, pass that in. 1, pass that in. 0, clock it in. 1, clock it in. Now I load in the B values right to left again. 0, clock it in. 1, clock it in. 1, clock it in. 0, clock it in. Now I've got A and B ready to go. Doesn't matter what my serial in is at this case. So I know I need four clock pulses. One, two, three, four. And there we have it. 
we get the same answers because I followed the same steps, just a lot quicker with the second run through.